Hi, this is Amar Abdelgawad, and in this lecture, we're going to discuss what are the physical findings in cases of ACL injury in adolescents. What are the objectives of this lecture? First, we'd like to summarize the anatomy and the function of ACL as an introduction, and then we're going to explain the physical exam finding in cases uh, of adolescents with ACL injury, and we will show a few videos uh, showing the positive finding in cases of uh, adolescent uh, with ACL injury. A good source that you can use is this book written by myself and Dr. Naga. So let's briefly discuss what is anterior crochet ligament. Anterior crochet ligament is one of the main ligaments of the knee. It extends from the anterior part of the tibia to the posterior femoral notch. So this is a picture for the uh, tibia looking from above. This is posterior, this is anterior, this is lateral, this is medial, and here the ACL. So the ACL anterior crochet um, comes from the anterior part of the tibia. So the anterior crochet comes from the anterior part of the tibia, and then it goes um, posterior and laterally uh, to be attached to the posterior femoral notch so it comes here from the anterior part of the tibia going laterally as you see here is the fibula so this is the lateral part going laterally and posteriorly to be attached here to the posterior part uh, of the femoral notch on, uh, on the lateral uh, side uh, what is the main function of the ACL? The main function of the ACL, it prevents anterior displacement of the tibia on the femur so ACL arises from the anterior part of the uh, tibia and the main function is that it prevents anterior translation of the tibia over the femur. ACL injury is the most common ligamentous injury of the knee. The instance in adolescent is increasing due to increased participation in sport at a higher level at younger age. Um, it's uh, more common in adolescent female and it's also more common in certain sports like soccer and uh, basketball. Uh, so uh, female uh, practicing in uh, basketball and soccer uh, have a higher chance of getting ACL injury. Uh, also, the injury can occur uh, secondly to direct trauma or it may also uh, happen due to twisting uh, injury of the knee or hyperextension injury of the knee. And it may be associated with medial and lateral collateral ligament injury or it may be associated with meniscal injury. So what is the clinical presentation for adolescent having an ACL injury? So the child will describe that he had an injury followed by popping of the knee and immediate swelling with inability to bear weight. So if you have a child coming uh, complaining of this popping of the knee after twisting injury or after an injury of the knee followed by immediate swelling that the child was not able to bear weight and was not able to um, finish the game, uh, this is highly suggestive of an ACL injury. In the acute sit sitting, what are you going to see? You're going to see marked swelling because of the hemoarthrosis, uh, but you cannot do stressing of the knee joint. So the test that we're going to show later, the Lachman and anterior drawer test, these tests cannot be done in the acute stage because of the pain. The patient will not be able to tolerate this setting. So in the acute setting, you will have the history, very characteristic popping of the knee with immediate swelling, inability to uh, put weight on the affected extremity. Child is not able to finish the game. And uh, when you examine in the child uh, you will find marked swelling because of the hemoarthrosis uh, the child will not be able to move the knee uh, you will not be able to do uh, the stressing of the knee because of the pain what about uh, in the chronic setting? In the chronic setting, you will find moderate effusion of the knee. Also, with palpation of the joint line, you may find mild tenderness. Uh, but most important thing is you will find positive Lachman and positive anterior drawer test. We're going to explain these in detail. So what is the anterior drawer test? Anterior drawer test is you stressing the knee to see the function of the ACL. Remember, as we said, the ACL prevents the tibia from anterior translation. So keep that in mind when we're doing the two stress tests for the ACL. The first one is, as we said, the anterior drawer test. So you bend the hip around 45 degree and then you bend the knee about 90 degree. And then the physician sits on the patient uh, foot and then he grasps uh, the tibia Put the two thumbs as you see here over the upper tibia so that he can better uh, assess the uh, movement of the tibia and then pull the tibia forward and see if the tibia will move with him or not. Uh, so this form is a stressing of the ACL um, uh, by uh, pulling on the tibia forward uh, with the knee bent 90 degree, the head bent 45 degree and the patient is sitting or the doctor is sitting on the patient's foot.
So we'll see now a video for the anterior drawer test. Uh, remember a few things. Remember that you have to compare the affected side to the normal side, and, uh, and you will see increased translation with the affected side. Also, you need to feel the, the, the type of the end point for your pulling. So if there is a firm end point, it means that there is something firm stopping you from pulling the tibia that indicate there is an intact ACL. If there is soft end point, it means that you're pulling and there is you don't feel that there is a firm end for your pulling. That's most probably an ACL injury. So let's see the video. So if you see here, you're pulling on the affected side. This is the normal side. You can see the difference here. You see the amount of translation here with soft end point. That's the affected side, the normal side. Here it is, that's the affected side. You can see increased amount of translation with no firm end point. Here is the affected side, the normal side is on this side. It has a firm end point. This has increased translation with soft end point. Let's see another time. Okay, soft end point, increased translation, less translation with firm end point. And if you notice, I'm sitting here on the patient's uh, foot. Let's discuss now the second test for stressing the ACL, which is the Lachman test. The Lachman test is a little bit different. So the knee is flexed about 30 degree. Uh, with one hand, you grab the lower end of the thigh, uh, stabilizing the femur. With the other hand, you grab the upper end of the leg, uh, and uh, then you pull the tibia forward in relation to the femur. And again, uh, as we said in the anterior drawer test, you compare that to the other side, and you feel if there is a soft end point or a firm end point. Um, the Lachman test is more sensitive. However, it has the problem that sometimes if the uh, physician hand is small or the patient's uh, uh, leg is big, uh, you may not be able to perform that test. Let's see now a video for the Lachman test. So if you see here, we're stressing that leg. We're holding the femur on one side, the tibia on one side, and then we're translating the tibia. And again, you compare that to the other side. So if you see here, we're increased translation, soft end point and compared to the other side. Let's see the video again. So here it is, translation, holding the femur with this hand, holding the leg with this hand, and then doing the translation, and then compare that to the other side. If there is an ACL injury, you'll notice two things. You'll notice increased translation and soft end point. Thank you. This video and all my videos are for educational purpose only. Thank you.